The Nissan Aria is a different kind of EV with some real strengths and some shortcomings like any vehicle. I'm here to tell you all about it. Nissan's LEAF was a breakthrough in 2010, the first mainstream electric vehicle and a bestseller for years. But an upstart called Tesla, plus a slew of EVs from legacy automakers upstaged the front drive air-cooled Pioneer, Aria is significantly different. It's upmarket, no more Chatamo connector, the battery pack is liquid-cooled, and all-wheel drive is available. It is more expensive, though. Pricing starts at $41,000 with destination for a base and gauge version with the 63 kilowatt hour battery. Nissan has dropped off a top trim Platinum Plus with the larger 87 kilowatt hour pack. It's got all wheel drive and is stuffed with luxury features. It's stickers for 56.9. Aria is built in Japan, so it does not qualify for Uncle Sam's $7,500 tax credit. If you're buying, maybe consider leasing. Also, check with your state to see what incentives it might be offering. Dealer spiffs and promotions pop up, so pay attention. Aria has many competitors. Chevy Equinox EV, Ford Mustang Mach-E, Hyundai Ioniq 5, Kia EV6, Subaru Solterra, Tesla Model Y, Toyota BZ4X, and Volkswagen ID4. Maybe even Leaf, which is still available. Single motor Arias are front drive and make either 214 or 238 horsepower. With the larger battery, uh, that's what the plus stands for. Dual motor E-Force versions generate 389 horses and 442 pound-feet of torque. The smaller pack is a little less powerful. What do you think, frunk or no frunk? No frunk. Typically, engineers have to decide whether to offer storage in the front or package all the powertrain components in the nose and keep the interior nice and airy without a big spine running down the middle. Power up is traditional and soothing. This shows much more information while driving. It's hard to shoot while on the road. The transmission selector is straightforward. Pull back twice to get additional recuperation drag. There's also the e-pedal setting, though I find I need to use the physical brakes for a complete stop. Drive modes are what you'd expect. I used standard for range testing, which is an EPA rated 267 miles for this Aria with 19 inch wheels. Front drive models are as high as 304. The max DC fast charge rate is 130 kilowatts. That's almost half what Hyundai and Kia EGMP vehicles offer. Plug in before dinner and home level two should fill an empty pack after a good night's sleep. Enter a route in the Navi system and it will find charging stations along the way. I road tripped Aria, it works for the most part. If you're thinking about buying the single motor Aria, know that it'll spool up to 60 miles an hour in just over seven seconds. Speed Racer, you're gonna want this dual motor setup because it'll do that dash in five seconds flat. And of course, being an EV, it feels punchier than that. This doesn't really have any performance tones other than when you're in sport mode, it's kind of subtle, I'm not sure you can hear that. On this sloppy day, the extra grip of dual motors is welcomed. It's something that Leaf never had. The E-Force all-wheel drive system changes the torque split front to rear, plus modifies the power delivery and the regen of both motors. This and brake torque vectoring adds stability in corners, plus counters dive and squat dynamics to subtly smooth body motions Nissan claims it can reduce motion sickness. The E4 system is always working in the background. It can't be turned off, um, but you know, do you want your kid to get car sick? I don't think so. Electric vehicles don't produce the noise and vibration of gas powered cars, but some EVs let road noise through. Aria is luxury car hushed. Automotive writers tend to be biased towards edgier, sporty driving dynamics. 
guilty. Uh, mainstream buyers, not as much, and they will probably enjoy the comfort of the Aria. It soaks up bumps nicely, takes on sharp edges really well. You don't feel them all that much. It's very supple. Um, yeah, if you throw it hard into a corner, there is going to be some body roll, but overall, it doesn't feel like you're driving a waterbed. It's a premium experience, especially compared to Leaf. Arguably, this could be sold as an Infinity. Remember Infinity? Aria is stuffed with ADAS tech like automatic emergency braking, front and rear, plus adaptive cruise. The Platinum has an auto park function. The EPA rates the range of this particular Aria at 267 miles. I drove it 250, still had 20 left, so yeah, it pretty much nails the range. But conditions were pretty much ideal. Half were in the city, half was highway driving at 60, 65 miles an hour, and temperatures in the mid 70s. I'm producing a second piece on road tripping the Aria. My wife is extra yeah. pressure so to not get to stranded. Podcast. We went camping in Eastern Washington, meaning mostly 70 plus mile an hour speeds and dramatic elevation changes. Also, charging infrastructure is more challenging in rural areas. The cliff notes, Nissan seats are supremely comfortable. The advanced Pro Pilot Assist 2.0 is hands-free in some cases. As you might imagine, our journey involved extra planning and time, plus Mexican food and a Ford dealership in Wenatchee. But ultimately, little anxiety. In this tough test, I easily saw 230 miles of range. Let's dive into the cabin space, which is unique, EV or ICE. Dig the Japanese vibe in the backlit panels, Upgrading to Platinum is necessary to get heated and vented leather seats with Zen Garden looks and suede materials that eliminates glare. I feel the Evolve trim at six grand less is the Aria sweet spot. It still delivers this and the terrific view of the sky, plus this motorized console that was surprisingly useful on our trip. Even better is this table of sorts, which is great for fast food uh, when sitting still kind of wish all vehicles had a similar setup. Bronze accents are everywhere, though no continuity when it comes to these. Not sure why there's minimal storage space in the large console. It's not like backseat occupants get a storage drawer. The cord wrap is a clever touch. Style points for the strafe of wood that reveals haptic controls on power-up. They have decent touch sensitivity. Can't say the same about the consoles. They require a firm press and selecting modes takes eyes off the road. Nissan adds a jaunty jog to the dual 12.3 inch displays. The gauge section is configurable. The infotainment section is too. Tiles can be dragged and dropped to customize the experience. Response is solid. There's voice command too, though I found digital Diane would chime in at random, frustrating. There's no 120 volt outlet, which would have helped on our trip. Unlike Equinox EV and Model Y, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are a thing and wireless. The Bose system is fine. I've experienced better. For scale, I'm five foot nine. As far as headroom goes, Aria has a good amount. I have the seat set for an optimal driving position. Knee and legroom are generous. Footroom, uh, that's a little tight. Cushions are high enough for good thigh support and the door openings are big enough so that if you're often loading car seats in and out, that should be no problem. Pockets in the doors, pockets on both seat backs. Thank you, Nissan. There is no separate climate zone back here, but there are adjustable vents, heated seats for the outboard positions, and USB ports to charge phones. A little surprised there's not a 110 outlet back here. Like the front, the floor back here is board flat. That helps with foot room. If you want cup holders, well, then you're going to have to keep it to two passengers back here. Ariat is fairly spacious. Three average-sized adults will be just fine for short trips across town. There's a wee bit of storage under the load floor and a tire repair kit, no spare. The charge cord is good for 120 and 240 current. In everyday use, the cargo hold takes on 23 cubic feet. 
Aria is about the same size as a Toyota RAV4, and dropping the seat backs opens up a solid 60 cubic feet of storage space. Now, because of my camping trip, I've skipped the TP trunk test, but here's everything we brought to Eastern Washington. Yeah, I overpacked. It's easier to just bring everything when there's this much room. This is a lot of kit. Aria's design is true to the concept that debuted at the 2019 Tokyo Motor Show, a rarity in the automotive world. It's a svelte shape with loads of detail when diving in closer. This one wears deep ocean blue, black diamond, two-tone paint, and upcharge. Aria is more expensive than the competition, especially without the federal tax credit. Its styling and interior take some of the sting out of that price. And there's a rear wiper. Seems like automakers are discovering that aerodynamics alone do not clear off the back glass, said the guy from Seattle. It took time for Nissan to deliver significant numbers of Aria to U.S. showrooms. Now it needs to get the word out. Summing Aria up, it's good looking. It's roomy with a cool Japanese vibe. Um, it's powerful when you get the all-wheel drive system. Plus, the ride quality is plush. On the other hand, when you're road tripping, the charging speed is pokey. And everybody wants more range, right? Also, it's a little expensive. Haggle hard if you're buying. The distinctive design inside and out will grab some buyers, so will the polished ride comfort. Aria was a long time coming. It's good to see Nissan turning over a new EV. Did you think I was going to say leave? <laughs> Thinking about Aria? Well, check out my road trip review. EVs are less efficient at highway speeds, and I drove through Snoqualmie Pass with an elevation of 3,000 feet. Seattle is at sea level. It's a tough real-world test. And to sweeten the deal, I'll post my Texas award-winning chili recipe in the video description. Not that Texas has a lock on chili. Hope you learned something from my experience with the Nissan Aria Platinum Plus. Instead of a fun fact, I'm going to point you to a video that I did about eForce. I was able to drive a mule where it could be turned on and off. It made a big difference. The video explains it really, really well. That technology thing, it's getting better and better. Hey, if you haven't subscribed, do it now. Click notifications. Follow me on social media, and if you have a question, leave it in the comments. I'm pretty good about getting back to people. Thanks for watching. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.